One of the most underrated things in Pokemon, other than the special physical split or running shoes or even Gen 5 as a whole and its seasons, is Pokemon music. It's a big chunk of my playing experience, yet to many, it's no more than 1%. And if that answer is too general, I think the Pokenav sneaking mechanic in Oras is one that heavily changed how fun it is to fill up the Pokedex. If I had to pick one thing, I think I would probably say like the lore. So if you were to think of the video game franchise that has the most amount of theories to come out of it, I'd probably say Pokemon. I mean, it'd definitely be up there. So, you know, Pokemon started out with this harmless kids game where you just collect creatures and then you have, then it just takes this dark turn like, did you kill Blue's Rat Cake? You know, Lavender Town, the Pokemon War, the Ghost Girl, all this stuff to come out of it. The most underrated thing in Pokemon is Cast Form. It is by far the most adorable Pokemon ever created with this little round head and it's just a little water molecule and just so adorable. I know this is an unpopular opinion, but I think the most underrated thing about Pokemon is actually Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. I just think that a lot of the little tweaks that Game Freak made to make the Alolan journey so much better went unnoticed by a lot of people who were just rushing to get to the Necrozma battle at the end. So if you take it slow, there's a lot more to appreciate in those games. There's also a lot of great Pokemon within these games too. I mean, Galissapod, Vicavolt, Beware, The Starters, Drampa, Lycanroc, Toucanon, Mimikyu. I mean, there's just so many well-designed Pokemon here. In my opinion, the most underrated thing in Pokemon, and certainly the thing that's not being talked about a lot in the mo at the moment, is how in Let's Go, the idea that you could catch a Pokemon in your room, or in your garden, or in your local town, and then take it into the world of Pokemon, that is nuts. That is, that is so cool. I, I think people aren't talking about that nearly enough. Pokemon Let's Go and Pokemon Go has just been so fascinating seeing uh, this phenomenon of people just getting together and having fun. And truthfully, if Pokemon Go did not get ruined by Niantic, in my opinion, from the beginning, I think uh, there would be no more wars. I think I'd have to say the Poke Radar in the fourth generation games. I really, really love Poke Radar hunting. I love the fact that they had, you know, grass in the game was set up for Poke Radar hunting. I like that they combined, you know, skill for shiny hunting and you'd get rewarded if you were good at the method. And I feel like that's kind of been lost in a few different generations. And I don't know, I thought that was the perfect way to make shiny hunting a little bit more accessible to people who don't have the patience to sit there trying to get the one in 8,000 Pokemon. but. Uh, I don't know, that's that's something that I've always loved and uh, I think a lot of people sleep on it. Um, I definitely enjoy Pokemon Contest a lot more as an adult than a kid because I can really just get into it and be stupid with it. Um, but I do remember as a kid doing a lot of Pokemon Contest as well. And I say that because a lot of the people that I either talk to about say they don't do it or um, it's one of those things where if I do sit down with someone and do a contest with them, I can show them why it's so fun for me. To me, the most underrated thing in Pokemon is just the fact that for as many Pokemon as there are and the diversity of different Pokemon that there are, everyone seems to have a different favorite and I think that that's super cool. Like I could never see myself having my favorite Pokemon being Lanoon or something like that, but there's someone out there who loves that Pokemon and, and I think that that's really cool, the fact that even with so many designs and things like that, there's a favorite out there for everyone and, and everyone has their own stories as to why a certain Pokemon's their favorites and uh, it's really cool to be a part of the franchise that way. The most underrated thing in Pokemon, in my opinion, is the whole mining situation we had in Diamond and Pearl. Me and my brother, we played countless hours there, just running around, creating our own secret bases, mining for the fossils, mining for the different things you could find. It was just so much fun and setting traps for each other. I think the importance of world building is underappreciated in Pokemon. The Pokemon Company and Game Freak pour so much love into their world building and the lore and everything. It's the main reason why I love Pokemon so much. It's such a great world, and I wish more people appreciated all those details that they put in. Also, the fact that Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky is not widely and most commonly accepted to be the best bit of Pokemon media in the universe means it's underappreciated, because it is. I'm gonna say Pokemon Colosseum. Uh, the concept of stealing back and purifying corrupted shadow Pokemon was a totally original mechanic for the series up to that point. Um, it added a twist to the typical Pokemon battle flow, um, and it also presented players with their first console Pokemon RPG with a full-fledged story mode, unlike its predecessors, um, Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, which had you go around challenging gym leaders and elite trainers, but wasn't super story-heavy. Black and White 1 and Black and White 2. 
those games have honestly the best story I think any Pokemon game could ever ask for. If you're like a first time Pokemon fan, that's like the best way to get into Pokemon. It would have to be the old school special events. Specifically, I love the mystery gift events that took place in Gen 4. I mean, the Arceus event, even though it wasn't released, the fact that they coded that into the game, I think that's that's great. That's so cool. The Shaman event, the Dark Cry event, Sinjo Ruins, and there's this scene with Arceus in the middle, and then there's Palkia, Dialga, Garatina. There was a giant cutscene that showed like all these different parts of the world reacting to your event that's happening. It shows like ancient ruins and I think like pyramids and it was crazy. This this was like mind blowing. This is going to sound really corny, but it's the friends you make along the way. I've had the same friends playing Pokemon since 2009 and they're still my friends to this day. Joey, PK, Scoot, all these people that I've met um, just throughout the years playing Pokemon has really meant a lot to me. Um, Cause you know, Pokemon is not, you know, it's, it's a, it's a trading game first. You're supposed to trade and share your Pokemon and whatever. <laughs> that would probably have to be the spin-off title, Pokemon Typing Adventure. Now this game only came out in Japan and Europe, and it's just so much better than it has any right to be. It had great challenge, it had fantastic music, the boss theme just has no right being in this spin-off game. It should be in like massive games, even main series Pokemon games. Pokemon Cries. Unlike a lot of people I know, I played Pokemon games with the audio up while I was growing up. Um, so I've learned to associate an entire Pokemon just off of the sound it makes. I think the most underrated thing in Pokemon is Professor Burnett. She's the only other female professor besides Professor Juniper, but she's barely even considered one. When people talk about female professors, they only think of Juniper. Nobody ever thinks of Professor Burnett, and I think that's really sad. And I, I play a ton of games, right? I play a ton of Nintendo, uh, and obviously other games as well, but Pokemon has to have some of the best music uh, out there. I, I think Gen 2 easily has some of the, the hypest game music I've ever heard. Uh, I've also absolutely loved um, just generations and generations to come like and, and as a content creator I see this a lot when I'm looking for music for my videos I was like whoa this wow Pokemon has this beat this beat is fire or like even the champion beats like they I can walk around outside and I'll just start him I'll just start humming then it then it then it Pokeathlon I know that sounds weird since Heart Gold and Soul Silver are definitely not underrated but I rarely see anyone talk about it Pokemon don't tend to excel with minigames, but I think that they outdid themselves with Pokeathlon. The minigames are actually incredibly fun, and that's not even all that gives them so much replay value. There's the achievements element of it as well, and always trying to better your high score. If I had to go with one thing in particular, I would say the Kalos region. When people talk about Pokemon X and Y, they kind of just talk about it as if it's average, but I think Kalos is one of the best regions we've ever seen. From the culture and the geography, to the history of it, to the Pokemon it introduced, in my opinion it is all absolutely fantastic and I really think it deserves a lot more credit than it gets. Um, the most underrated thing that I could think of is the rival battle with your rival, May or Brendan, in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire after Slayport City, I think? Yeah, that apparently is the one of the hardest rival battles of any game, especially when you're speedrunning. Um, I don't know if it's super underrated, but the Poker Ride feature in 7th generation, I feel like 7th generation deserves a little bit more credit for that because HMs were one of the worst parts, in my opinion, about Pokemon. Now you can use whatever Pokemon you want, it frees up so much choice and your movesets and the Pokemon that you want to use, I really feel like the Poker Ride feature was probably the best introduction that Generation 7 had. I would have to say it would either be the Via Seeker or just the overall map layout of Pokemon. Uh, first thing I look for whenever I play a Pokemon game is the map. Give me a map. I want to see the map. And third generation uh, for you know Ruby Sapphire, Emerald, and Fire Red and Leaf Green, I think they have the best map layout. You know, I think one of the most underrated things in Pokemon is actually some of the Pokemon themselves. An orange, fire-breathing dragon. That's not hard to do. But then there's Pokemon who are so massively slept on just because they're not good in battle. But, you know, they have an amazing backstory. Like, 
Bronzor and Bronzong being based on a mirror and a bell from a Japanese folk tale and the mirror won't melt and that's why they have the heat proof ability and it's it's so inspired and a lot of people don't seem to realize that a lot of Pokemon have a really deep inspiration to them. The most underrated thing in Pokemon is the freedom once you've completed the game to play that game however you want from that point on. If you want to train Pokemon to be the best battlers, you can do that. If you want to go off and hunt for shinies of every single Pokemon in the game, you can do that. There are so many methods you can use. If you want to just complete the Elite Four over and over again and get loads and loads of in-game money and buy all the items and clothes and things available, you can do that. You have the freedom to make your post-game experience in Pokemon the experience that you want it to be. And I think people don't really think of that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a big thanks to all the wonderful Poketubers that participated. Please make sure to check out part 4 which I released today as well, and make sure to check out the description to understand more about this project and the YouTubers that I interviewed. Of course, subscribe if you enjoyed, and leave a like to show your support for this series. Bye!